Hello everyone. In the last video, we discussed the various ways of defining alpha. In this video, let us go through the idea of what is known as alpha transport, which is also known as alpha beta separation or beta capture. Alpha transport is an active passive strategy. So let us begin by making a formal note of that here first. Active dash passive strategy. And to begin with, let us talk about the active part of our strategy here. Let us say that through a concerted effort, you succeed in constructing a positive alpha portfolio. Let us give that portfolio a name. Let's call it portfolio P. What you do then is that you use the single index model and find that the average excess return on this portfolio P can be described through the following equation. So let us write the single index model equation here. The average excess return on this portfolio P, which is our active portfolio, is described by a positive alpha of 0 0.02 plus a beta of 1.5 times the average excess returns from the market plus the error term E, which captures the unsystematic part of the return, return from the from tolerating the unsystematic risk. Well, what you have now is a reason to have mixed feelings about the situation. On the one hand, you are happy because you have a positive alpha here. But on the other hand, you have a significant exposure to market risk because the beta of this portfolio is 1.5, which is greater than the market beta of 1. You are therefore looking for a way which is going to allow you to enjoy the upside of the positive alpha, but at the same time, take away the exposure to the market risk. This is where the passive part of our strategy is going to kick in. What you can do is that you can construct a passive portfolio that tracks the market sensitive part of portfolio P. Since this is going to be a tracking portfolio, let us give it a name. Let us call it portfolio T now. This is a tracking portfolio and tracks only the market sensitive part of portfolio P. What do we mean when we say tracking only the market sensitive part of portfolio P? This essentially means that we want that the beta of this portfolio T should be equal to 1.5. If you can do this, then you would have captured the beta through this tracking portfolio. And that is why we can use the name beta capture. Let us see how we can go about doing this by taking a few steps. Let's say to begin with, you go ahead and borrow some money. So let me write here for you, borrow some money. If you want a more technical description, you could say we are taking a levered position because borrowing means, um, means um, employing some leverage. So let us say we are borrowing some money at the risk free rate. Well, you can use the treasury bills, treasury bill rate here. So we are borrowing some money at the risk free rate and using this borrowed money to take a levered position in the market portfolio in such a way that the beta of the tracking portfolio is going to be equal to 1.5. So basically the tracking portfolio is going to be comprised of doing two things. Well, you're borrowing some money at the risk free rate. So if we write the weight on the risk free asset, it's going to be equal to minus 0.5. And then the other part of this tracking portfolio is going to be that you are taking a position in the market portfolio and this is a levered position. The weight therefore is going to be equal to 1.5. So you can see that the sum of weights is now going to be equal to 1. So you borrow some money here and use this borrowed money to take a levered position in the market portfolio. Let us see if this can give us a beta of 1.5. This is very easy to see. We know that the beta of a portfolio is equal to the proportion of money that we invest in this asset here, which is minus 0.5 times the beta of this portfolio. Well, this is the risk free asset. So the beta is going to be zero. 
plus the other asset its weight is 1.5 here and the beta of the market is going to be 1 so what we have here this is going to go away because this is 0 here the beta is 0 so what we have is the beta on the tracking portfolio equal to 1.5 which is what we wanted here the question now is is this tracking portfolio also going to have some alpha the answer is no well there is no alpha offered by the risk-free asset and the market alpha also we know is equal to zero so therefore we can make a note of this fact here that the alpha on the tracking portfolio is going to be zero so we can summarize now our active passive strategy it involves doing just two things in this case what we are going to do is that we are going to go long in portfolio P this portfolio here our initial portfolio which we constructed through an active security analysis so we go long in this portfolio that is we buy this portfolio and we take a short position in portfolio T which is a combination of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio so we have two port two portfolios here P and T in one of them we take a long position in the other one we take a short position so this can give us a new portfolio the overall portfolio or the complete portfolio let us give that portfolio a name now let's call it portfolio a so what is going to be our return on portfolio a now well what are the components of portfolio a there are two components one long position in P and two a short position in T so let us write the return so the average excess return on portfolio A now is going to be equal to well one part of the return is going to come from here which is the return that we described here this was the return for portfolio P so we can just copy that down here 0 0.02 alpha plus 1.5 beta times well this was RF bar here 1.5 times average excess return on the market plus the error term or the residual part here so this is our return from the long position and the other part is going to be from this short position here and this is going to be therefore subtracted what is the return on the short position well the alpha of portfolio T is 0 here so we can write a 0 plus what are what else do we have we have a beta of T which is 1.5 here times the average excess return from the market this is what we have from portfolio T so let us open up the brackets and see what we have 0 0.02 plus 1.5 times RM bar minus RF bar plus the error term minus 0 I'm opening the bracket now minus 1.5 times RM bar minus RF bar so well this is a positive item here and this is a negative item here so both of them are going to cancel out what we are left with 0 0.02 from here and the error term here so what you observe here is now that we have we have ended up with only the positive alpha here of 0 0.02 the market exposures from the two portfolios this one here this was the market exposure from portfolio P and this was the exposure from portfolio T they have cancelled each other out leaving us only with two items here the alpha and a little bit on systematic risk and we are hoping that if we did a good job at constructing portfolio P in the beginning then portfolio P would have a very low unsystematic risk and hopefully we can just ignore it now because we have succeeded in separating the alpha from the beta 
we can call this strategy the alpha beta separation and because we have only transported the alpha from portfolio P over to portfolio A we can call it the alpha transport I have a question for you now what would have happened if the average excess return on portfolio P was described as this an alpha of 0 0.02 but rather than having a positive beta like we had here in the beginning here we had a positive beta of 1.5 if rather than a positive beta if we had a negative beta minus 1.5 times average excess return from the market what would be your strategy to transport the alpha across over to the portfolio A well we would construct again a tracking portfolio T but this time the weights would be reversed we would invest or rather we would go short in the market portfolio to this extent and we would invest some money at the risk-free rate to construct our tracking portfolio so we would short the market portfolio and invest some proceeds at the risk-free rate so what is going to be our return in this case on the overall portfolio a so if we are writing the average excess return from portfolio a we would again have some part of the return coming from portfolio p which is 0 0.02 minus 1.5 times rm bar minus rf bar and minus what would we have from the tracking portfolio we would have a zero alpha and we would have a minus 1.5 beta for the market part multiplied by rm bar minus rf bar if you open up these brackets you will see that we get 0 0.02 minus 1.5 times rm bar minus rf bar minus 0 plus 1.5 times 1.5 times rm bar minus rf bar so this time this negative item is going to cancel out with this leaving you with 0 0.02 plus I forgot to write the residual term before I should have written it here and this would be here as well so this is what we would get which is the same thing as this so we would have succeeded in transporting the alpha over from portfolio P to portfolio A without taking on the market risk this is all I wanted to tell you in this brief video see you later